Hello. Welcome to my channel, Medical Assistant with Miss K. If this is your first time here, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. So today I am doing a live lesson on medical terminology for beginners. This video was highly requested. I've had quite a few people request this video, um, including a colleague of mine. <laughs> um, so I finally got to finish um, um, this lesson here that I'm going to do today. I got some feedback on some of my other live videos. Um, the feedback was that I need to consider when people are watching a replay, because if you've been following my channel for a while, you know I do um, live study sessions for the test. And I did not realize that it was very distracting for people watching a replay. So I'll be mindful of that while I'm doing this live lesson today. So I will try to just go ahead and get through it. And then if anybody joins live and has questions, I will ask them at the end. Um, so that way, anybody watching the replay is not distracted by me stopping during the lesson and answering questions and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with this lesson. Again, this is medical terminology for beginners. This is a lesson for people that's very new to medical terminology. Medical terminology is the very first step, um, very first thing that you learn um, on, um, as far as, um, entering into the medical field, whether you're, whether you're taking the administrative medical assistant classes or the clinical side, because this is going to be your foundation, right? And so I will say medical terminology, you know, you're literally learning a whole new language. Okay. So, um, if you've already had experience with medical terminology, this right here will be very easy for you, ele very elementary for you. But for those of you that's new to terminology, um, I hope that this lesson is helpful. Um, Medical terms are derived from both Greek and Latin. All right, so let's talk about parts of a word, okay? So these are things, of course, we learned back in elementary school, right? But some people for forget, you know? And so um, I do want to make sure I go ahead over the parts of a word first, right? Um, so we the different word parts, right? So we have a root word, right? So the root word is usually the middle, right? That's the main part of the word. Now, the root word in a medical term usually relates to a part of the body, but not always, okay? Um, and then we have the prefix. That's the beginning of the word. The prefix normally describes the location of the word, um, the size, right? And you'll see that once we get to the prefix part of the lesson. Um, but prefix, a lot of people get the prefix and suffix mixed up, but just think of pre. Pre is before, right? So prefix goes before the root, right? And then that brings us to the, I'm sorry, I accidentally um, went ahead. Sorry about that. I don't know what I hit. Sorry about that. So that's the root word, the middle part of the word, or main part. And we have the prefix. That's the beginning of the word that this describes the word. Then we have the suffix, that's the end. And so usually a procedure or condition, okay? And in most medical terms, I will tell you this, a lot of medical terms we read from the suffix um, to the beginning. We read from the end of the word to the beginning of the word. And you will see what I mean in just a moment. All right, so let's um, look at some uh, um, some uh, a rule for um, medical terms. First of all, let's talk about this combining vowel. So the combining vowel is usually an O, okay? It joins the root word to the suffix, okay? So the combining vowel joins the root word, which we said is the main part of the word, right? It joins a root word to a suffix. The combining vowel also joins two roots together because in some cases, you will have a medical term that has two root words in it, okay? So every medical term is not necessarily just going to um, have a prefix, a root word, and a suffix, right? It may just have, you know, a prefix and a, a prefix and a root or a root and a suffix, right? Or two roots and a suffix, right? Um, and then a combining form is what we form, is what we have once we join the root word with the combining vowel, okay? Um, now, very important rule. When you are joining your um, combining vowel and your suffix, you want to drop, when, I'm sorry, when you're joining your uh, root word, and your suffix, you want to drop that combining vowel. So you're going to drop the combining vowel before combining with a suffix that begins with a vowel, okay? So that combining vowel that we said is normally an O, when we're joining a root word to a suffix that begins with a vowel, we're going to drop that O. If we're, if we're combining 
um, the root word to a suffix that begins with a consonant, then we keep the combining vowel, okay? Now you'll see down here that I have in red that we keep the vowel no matter um, we keep the vowel no matter what if we're joining two root words. And so we'll look at that in a moment. We'll see examples of that. So again, combining vowel is usually a O. We use that to join the root word to a suffix or two roots together. All right. And then we want to, of course, drop the combining vowel before combining with a suffix that begins with a vowel. Keep the combining vowel before combining with a suffix that that begins with a consonant. And either way, when we're joining two roots, even if the second root begins with a vowel, we still keep the combining vowel, okay? And we'll, we'll see some examples of that because if, the, if you're brand new to medical terminology, this may be confusing to you right now, but you'll see it exactly what I mean in a moment. All right, so let's look at this. All right, so let's look at the root word gastro. Now, I just wanna keep, I just wanna point out though, gastro because the o is already combined to this this is what we call a combining form because i already have the o so most medical terms you'll see already with the o combined to it but don't be surprised if you just see just g-a-s-t-r just gastro right by itself and you may have to join it to the o okay i point that out because some of my students get confused they're like miss k how come sometimes it says gastro sometimes it's just um you know just gastro by itself in this case, when it says gastro, this is because the O has already been um, has already been combined. OK, so gastro gastro is a root word that means stomach. Now, suffix I use itis, um, which means inflammation of this is going to be I'll use this a lot in this lesson. Um, it's a suffix that means inflammation of it's called itis. So usually when we write the root words, it'll already um, have the O attached and you, it'll look like this. Now, the suffix is always going to look like this with the dash in front because I've had students ask me too. how do I know when I see the word parts? How do I know if it's a suffix or root word or um, or prefix? The suffix will have the dash in front of it. Prefix is always going to have the dash right after it. And then the root word will usually look just like this with the O already attached. And sometimes it may not have the O attached. All right. So as I mentioned, the rule is when we're joining a root word to a suffix that begins with a vowel. Remember I said we have to drop the O. So when we go to combine gastro to itis, right, we're going to drop the O and it becomes gastritis. All right. Now, I will tell you guys this. When learning, when learning medical terminology, it's usually easier to learn to read it. And I think most languages are like that. When you're learning a new language, it's usually easier to read it than it is to write it. Um, so with this, because we know that itis is inflammation of, right? And we know that gastro is stomach, gastritis, right? Has to mean inflammation of the stomach. Now, remember I mentioned that most terms we read from the beginning, from the end to the beginning. So we say inflammation of the stomach. Now, that wouldn't mean that you're incorrect if you say stomach inflammation, right? Um, but this is just an example of how most of the time we read it from the suffix to the beginning. So this is inflammation of the stomach. Now, notice I did put the incorrect way to write it out here. If we had not dropped the O, it would have been gastroitis. But remember that um, suffix began with a vowel. So we had to drop that combining O. OK. So that's gastritis, inflammation of the stomach. Now, if you happen to be watching this. Anything that I mention on here that you don't already have in your notes, or maybe you're already in school and you know you've already been learning terminology. If you happen to see something here um, on this lesson that you don't have in your notes already, add it. If you don't already have a flashcard with with a term mentioned, with a term that I mentioned, add it. I always tell my students anytime you hear a new term, add it to your notes. All right. So that's gastritis, inflammation of the stomach. Now, if you just read that with me, you have just done your very first. Um, medical term. Okay. It's a matter of just combining the two. So knowing how to write it out, first of all, which we already know we're going to drop the O if the, if the suffix starts with a vowel, right? We know we're going to keep the O if it starts with a consonant. And then it's just a matter of putting it together. And we say this inflammation of the stomach, right? All right. So let's look at another one. So gastro, we already said that means stomach, right? We know that gastro is stomach. Now let's look at this suffix, suffix logi, which means the study of. Now, 
I want to point out one other thing, just in case people get confused. Sometimes the O, <laughs> and hopefully this is not confusing for people who just learned a medical terminology, but sometimes you may even see the O already attached to the suffix. So you may see ology. So don't be confused if you see ology or you see logi. Okay. Ology just means that the O is already attached to the suffix. Okay. So logi is the study of. Now, when we combine gastro and logi, because logi starts with a consonant, we're going to go ahead and keep that O. Okay. So it becomes gastrology. And logi is a study of so that and gastro is stomach. So that means that gastrology is the study of the stomach. Okay. Gastrology is the study of the stomach. All right. Hopefully you guys are with me for those of you that are brand new to medical term. All right. So um, again, same root word stomach. OK, gastro, which is stomach. Right now we're going to combine it with logis. OK, again, you may see the O already attached, which is ologist. OK, you just in case you're confused. So logis refer, refers to specialist. Right or one who studies or specializes in, okay? So if we combine gastro to logis, again, we're going to keep the O because logis starts with a consonant. So it becomes gastrologist. So if gastro is stomach and logis refers to specialist or one who studies or specializes in, what is gastrologist? What is gastrologist? Gastrologist is one who studies or specializes in a stomach, or you might just say stomach specialist, right? So again, you guys have read uh, several um, terms now. You've created several terms now. So all righty, let's look at the next one. So let's look at a different root word. Let's look at entero, okay? Entero refers to the intestine, right? So if we look at suffix, if we look at the suffix, logi or ology in this case i went on ahead and put the o there okay so if we look at ology which is the study of again and we combine it with we combine entero and ology in this case the o is there so we're going to drop that o right and it becomes enterology entero is intestine um lo ology is the study of so it becomes the study of the intestine right Look at you read a medical term. All righty. So let's combine these two root words together. Let's do that. So we've, we've you've, you've done a couple exercises where you've combined a root word to a suffix. Now let's combine two root words because I told you, remember, sometimes the word, some, some terms may have um, two root words and some terms may even have more than two, two or three root words in it, okay? And so let's combine gastro, with entero, with ologist. And what does that become? I'll wait just a second. So gastro plus entero plus ologist. We combine that to read gastroenterologist, okay? Gastro is stomach, entero is intestine. So what is this? One who specializes in the stomach and small intestines or the stomach and intestines, right? Notice how we kept the vowel between the roots. So remember the rule was that we keep the vowel even if the next root word begins with a vowel. Remember, dropping an O only refers to joining a root word and a suffix. But when we're joining two root words, we want to keep that O either way. So it's gastro, entero. Now, in this case, combining entero to ologies, we will drop that O, right? And it becomes gastroenterologist, one who specializes in the stomach and intestines. Hope you guys are with me. I see that there are some people on here live. If you happen to have any questions, I'm going to answer them at the end because I don't want this to be a distraction for people that may be watching the replay. OK, so I'll answer any questions. I'll go back at the end and answer any questions you guys have. All righty. So now let's look at another root word, cardio right? Cardio, which means the heart, right? And then we have still sticking with ology, right? The study of. So if cardi means the heart and ology means the study of, cardiology is the study of the heart, okay? Now let's combine that with ologist or logist, right? Cardiologist is a heart specialist or one who studies the heart. How do we know that? Because again, 
cardio is heart, logis is specialist or one who studies, okay? So as you can see, again, for those of you that's brand new to medical terminology, you're just hearing this for the first time. As you can see, this is simply how we read medical terms. It's just important to know the meaning of the word parts in the word. And uh, for those of you that are going to be taking your certification exams soon, medical terminology for some of you guys are going to be the difference between getting an answer right or wrong because some of those questions is really just going to come down to you knowing a word, knowing your word parts. For an example, if you see um, a um, if you see a question about maybe the patient had a um, an echocardiogram and it um, that means that the patient is um, is getting a procedure or they're seeing a specialist of the and they'll have, they'll have heart, lung, kidney, liver, right? You'll know that it's heart because you know, okay, echocardiogram, cardio is heart. So I use that to say, I use that example to say that some answers are literally just going to be a matter of knowing your medical terms, okay? All right, so let's continue. All right, so um, anybody watching the replay, this will be a good time for you to pa pause it and write these words down. If you're watching with me live, you can, you know, jot those D's down in your notes. Um, but let's look at some root words pertaining to the body. I usually tell people to start with learning your body parts. This is how I always start my students. I start with just um, um, very common root words, always relating to the body. OK, so we got hepato, which means liver. So when you see this within a term, you know, it has something to do with the liver. Right. Cholecysto is gallbladder. OK. Spleno is spleen. Pancreato is pancreas. Adreno is adrenal gland. Nephro is kidney. Reno is also kidney. Okay. Pomo and pomino refers to the lungs. Pneumo also refers to the lungs. Now notice, if you notice, sometimes you'll see medical terms, um, that mean the same thing, right? So, right, like nephro and reno both refer to kidney, um, pomino and pneumo both refer to the lungs, right? And then we have colo, which refers to the colon, large intestine. And then we have cysto down at the bottom, which refers to the bladder. Now, that cysto is not referring um, to a cyst that like you, like you may, you know, like you, <laughs> like you may, you know, the cyst that you think is actually referring to the bladder, okay? Um, all right, so let's combine hepato and itis. So itis, we already know that that means inflammation of, right? And we said hepato refers to what? What do we say hepato refers to? The liver. So if we join hepato to itis, first of all, are we going to keep the O or are we going to drop the O? So itis begins with a vowel, so we're going to drop that O. And it becomes hepatitis, which the medical term, which is a medical term for inflammation of the liver, right? So hepato plus itis is inflammation of the liver, okay? All right, so let's look at some more. Let's define the following terms together. So let's look at cystitis. So by now, you everybody knows what itis means. It means inflammation of, right? So cysto we said meant what? Bladder. So if this is cystitis. We drop that O in cysto, combine it with itis. Cystitis will be what? You guys can tell me in the um, comment section. Let's look at the next one. Cholecysto combined with itis is cholecystitis, right? Then we have carditis, right? What do we say cardio refers to? Then we have nephritis, right? Nephro referred to what? And then we have pancreatitis, right? Pancreato combined with itis. Now, what is that? Give you guys a second. If you want to put it in the comments, you can. If you're watching a replay, you can, you know, take a moment to see if you know these, kind of test yourself before I go to the next slide. So we have cystitis, cholecystitis, carditis, nephritis, and pancreatitis. We all know that itis is inflammation of, so we know that the conditions, all of these conditions are inflammatory conditions, right? We know that. 
All right, so let's see. All righty, so cystitis is going to be inflammation of the bladder. Cholecystitis is inflammation of the gallbladder because we know that cholecysto referred to gallbladder. Carditis, cardio meant heart, right? So that's inflammation of the heart. Nephro referred to kidney, right? So that's inflammation of the kidney. Pancreato referred to pancreas. So that's inflammation of the pancreas. So you got it. So those of you that's learning medical terminology for the first time, as you can see, all we're doing is reading the terms, right? Based on what we know them, based on what we know the medical word, the word parts to mean, right? All right. So more root words relating to the body. More root words relating to the body. Let's look at these. So we have um, arthro, which means joint, right? Cephalo means head. Encephalo is brain. Now, I'll give you guys a little hint here. We haven't got to prefixes yet, but in means in or within, okay? And then, so if you look at these two, people get that cephalo and encephalo mixed up, right? They get the head and brain mixed up. Cephalo is head, encephalo within the head is the brain, right? So think of that. All right, cervical means neck. Now, this is not cervical like the cervix, okay? Um, uh, the raco or the raso means chest. Some say the raso, some say the raco. When we combine it, we actually say um, what we actually say the raco. So I'll say the raco. Um, dermo, or actually when we combine it with um, IC, we say the rasic. So the raso, the raco, either way. I right, dermo or dermato is skin or dermis. Um, neuro is nerve. Um, hemo and hamato is blood. Mayo is muscle. Okay, that I was waiting for this to, this line to disappear. I don't know if you guys can see this like I can. Um, and then osteo is bone. Hopefully you guys can see that. That line at the bottom keeps coming up. I don't know if you guys can see it too. All right. So this is a good time to pause it to write these down. Um, these are more root words pertaining to the body. Again, I always start off with learning root words pertaining to the body. So that way, when you're seeing your terms, whether you're reading your book or looking at an article or whatever, reading something or whatever, you know what body, you at least know the body part um, that the word is pertaining to. OK, this is why in the beginning you do want to focus on learning the root words relating to the body. OK. All right, so let's define some more terms. Here we go again with the itis, right? Itis, this is, I do this with my with my um, actual students as well. Um, starting out, we just um, create just all kinds of terms using one or two suffixes until we get the hang of it. All right, so we got arthritis. So arthro combined with itis, we drop that O in arthro, combine it with itis. Dermatitis. We combine dermato with itis, right? Neuro, we combine neuro with itis. Then we have myocarditis. Oh, wait a minute. It looks like it's two root words in this word. We have myo and we have cardio combined with itis. Now, okay, two root words, myo and cardio combined with itis. Give you guys a moment to look at those. Arthritis, arthro means what? Dermatitis, dermato or derma means what? Neuritis, neuro means what? Myocarditis, myo refers to what? Cardio refers to what? All righty. So arthritis, that's inflammation of a joint. Arthro means joint. Dermatitis is inflammation of the skin. Dermato means skin. Neuritis is inflammation of a nerve because neuro means nerve, right? Myocarditis is inflammation of the heart muscle, okay? So my, myocardio refers to the heart muscle. So we know myo is, is, is muscle. We know cardio is heart, right? Myocardio refers to the heart muscle, okay? So myocarditis is inflammation of the heart muscle. 
All righty. Let's see what we got next. All right. So knowledge check. A cardiopulmonologist is one who specializes in the what and the what. Again, we have two root words. We have cardio and we have pulmono. Those are two root words that refers to what? Cardio refers to heart. You know that. And then if you look back at your the notes you just took, pulmono means what? A cardiopulmonologist is one who specializes in the what and the what. Cardiopulmonologist is one who specializes in the heart and lungs. Okay, cardio is heart, pulmono is lungs. So that is a specialist who who specializes in the heart and the lungs. All right, so these are some common suffixes. So um, I don't have prefixes in this lesson. I'll do that in another lesson, but um, I'm starting you guys off the same way I start my actual students in class. We go through some common body parts and we go through some common suffixes. We join those together and then we start bringing the prefixes in, okay? So right now we just wanna focus on the suffixes, which is the end of the word, right? So as you can see, that first, um, uh, this first one here pertaining to has several um, suffixes, right? It has several. All of these each refer to pertaining to, okay? So when you see these used, this means pertaining to, okay? Now, a lot of terms that you'll see, I will tell you this, will already have the pertaining to, um, will already have the pertaining to uh, suffix attached. And when we look at an example in a minute, I believe it's on the next slide, you'll see what I mean, okay? All right, so then uh, we have OMA, which is tumor or mass, um, pathy, which is disease, osis is condition or abnormal condition, ia or ism is condition of, we have penia here, which is decrease below or lower than normal, emia is relating to a blood condition. So remember we saw, we saw hemo and hemato, which refers to blood. That was the root word, okay? This is a suffix that refers to blood, okay? Emia refers to blood condition. Um, algia is pain. Philia is the love of. Phobia is fear of. And ipnea is breathing. So ipnea is breathing. Don't get that ipnea confused with penia. A lot of people get those confused and pronounce that ipnea as penia. That's not penia. That is ipnea. Okay. And ipnea refers to breathing. All right. More common suffixes. Now these are relating to procedures. Now, one thing I will tell you too. Knowing your suffixes is, is also, well, knowing medical terminology, period, is going to, like I said, it's the difference between, it's going to be the difference between getting some of those answers right when you guys go to take the certification. But knowing your suffixes, this is going to separate procedures from conditions, right? If we, if you, if you remember some of those suffixes, most of those suffixes we just looked at, they all were relating to conditions, right? So if you see a suffix that ended and that ended and if you saw a term that ended in, in ism, you know that it's not a procedure. You know that that's some kind of condition because ism refers to condition. Right. If you saw what was another one? Um, um, what was another one we just saw? Uh, like Oma. Right. You know, that refers to tumor. That doesn't that can't be a procedure because that's a condition. Right. That's all right. So let's look at these. So we got ectomy. Ectomy means excision or surgical removal of. So if you see something that, if you see a term that ends in ectomy, you automatically know that it's the surgical removal of that organ or of that body part, right? Otomy is incision or cutting into, okay? Um, ostomy, now a lot of people end up getting ostomy and otomy mixed up. Otomy is incision and cutting into. Ostomy Okay, notice there's an S added. It's not otomy, it's ostomy. It's cutting into to make a hole, okay? Cutting into to make a hole. Or or you may see um, artificial opening. You may see artificial opening as a um, definition, okay? So ostomy is uh, and cutting into to make a hole or artificial opening, okay? 
for some kind of connection, okay? Um, scopy or scopy is to view, okay? Um, graphy, I don't know why this arrow keeps turning around like that. Um, graphy or graph is the process of recording. Gram is recording. Notice how this arrow, you guys, I don't know if you guys can see the arrow. <laughs> it keeps turning around. All right, gram is recording. Um, plasty is surgical repair. Therapy refers to treatment. Synthesis is puncture of a cavity to remove fluid. Rafi is suture of. Okay, so uh, many people get plasty and rafi mixed up. So plasty is surgical repair. Okay, usually of an organ, right? Um, and then rafi is suture of. Okay, so suture stitches, right? So suture of, so that means to, you know, to suture something or to fix it, right? Or to mend it, okay? So it's not the same as the surgical repair. All righty. So let's add some together. Now, this is what I meant when I said, um, well, let's put it together first and I'll tell you what I mean, what I was talking about. So gastro plus IC. IC is a suffix meaning what? Pertaining to, right? So we combine those two. First of all, IC is a vowel, right? I is a vowel, so we're going to drop that O. And then Reno, combining it to AL, which also means what? Pertaining to. We're going to combine those. Colocisto. Ectomy is a vowel, so we're going to drop that O, right? When we combine those two. Colo and ostomy. Ostomy is a vowel, so of course we're going to drop the O on colo. We're going to combine cysto and otomy. Otomy, of course, is a vowel, starts with a vowel, so we're going to drop the O when we combine those two. And let's look at what we got here. Okay, so gastro is pertaining to the stomach. Now, this is what I was talking about when I was talking about those pertaining to um, suffixes are usually already um, combined to a term. So gastric, right? A lot of times when you see gastric, when you see gastro, you already see it combined to um, IC to mean gastric. It, that just means pertaining to the stomach. Same thing with renal. So pertaining to the kidney. Most of the time when you see renal, reno, you'll already see it combined to the AL suffix to say renal. OK, so th that's what I meant when I said that most of the time the pertaining to suffix is already attached to most medical terms. So don't be surprised, you know, if you see a question that says, you know, what does gastric mean? Of course, we know it means pertaining to the stomach. They may not say gastro, it may just say gastric, okay? Same thing with renal. They may not have the reno, R-E-N slash O, they may just say renal, okay? All right, now call it cystectomy, right? We said ectomy refers to surgical removal of, right? And then gallbladder is cholecyst, right? So cholecystectomy is surgical removal of the gallbladder, all right? Colostomy, we said colo is colon. Ostomy is cutting into to create an opening or a hole. So a colostomy means to cut into the colon to create an opening or hole, okay? Usually for a colostomy bag. Cystotomy, Cysto is the bladder. Otomy is cutting into. So a cystotomy means cutting into the bladder. See, there you go. Read the medical terminology again. All right, let's look at some more. Hemo, we want to combine that to philia. Now, philia starts with a consonant, so we're not going to need to drop that O, right? We can keep that O. Myo, we're going to join to algia or algia, right? Um, and that's, and that's a vowel. The A is a vowel. So we're going to keep that O. I'm sorry. We're going to drop that O. Arthro, we're going to uh, combine that to synthesis, which starts with a consonant. So we'll keep that O. Um, hemo, again, we said that was blood. We're going to combine that to phobia, which starts with a consonant. So we'll keep that O. Neuro, we're going to combine that to Rafi which starts with a consonant, so we're going to keep that O. All right. 
Hemophilia, the medical term meaning the love of blood. And hemophilia is actually a blood clotting disorder in which a person's um, platelets are not um, working, um, uh, not necessarily, well, a person with a hemophilia, they may have a low platelet count or they may not necessarily have a low platelet count, but they have a disorder in which the platelets are not clotting the blood like it's supposed to. So in that case, the person um, may bleed out any like a slight cut can make them bleed out. They may have easily bleeding of the nose or gums. Um, right. So that's actually a blood clotting disorder. Um, myalgia. That's muscle pain. Myalgia is muscle pain. Arthrocentesis. We say arthro is joint and we say centesis is puncture of a, of a joint to remove fluid. It's puncture of a cavity to remove fluid. So centesis. Arthrocentesis is puncture of a joint to remove fluid. Let me go back to that last slide. I think I, let me see something. Hold on one second, guys. I need to go back and see something because I might have. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. I, I wanted to make sure I didn't define centesis with joint. I, I defined it with cavity. I wanted to make sure. Sorry about that. All right. So um, puncture of a joint to remove fluid because arthro we know means joint. Um, and synthesis of uh, is puncture of a cavity to remove fluid. Hemophobia, we know hemo is blood, phobia is fear. Neurography is neuro is nerve. Rafi means surgical uh, su su surgical suturing of. So we know we know neuropathy is surgical suturing of a nerve of a could be of a severed nerve or divided nerve. All right, so let's look at this. Now we have two root words again that we're combining. Cardio plus myo. We're going to combine that with the suffix pathy, okay? The raco or the raso, we're going to combine that with otomy, okay? Hamato, we're going to combine with oma. Nephro, we're going to combine with ectomy. And neuro, we're going to combine with pathy. Now, and again, by now, you already should have the hang of which terms you're going to keep the O and which terms in which you're going to drop the O, right? You all, you should have the, you should have a hang of it by now, right? Um, the suffixes that begins with a vowel, of course, we drop the O's. The suffix that begins with a consonant, of course, we keep the O's. And root to root, we keep the O no matter what, okay? So this just happens to start with a consonant, but even if it started with a vowel, we would still keep the O because during the two root words, we always keep the O, okay? All right, so let's look at this. Cardiomyopathy. So cardiomyo refers to the heart muscle, right? Um, pathy is disease. So cardiomyopathy is disease of the heart muscle, okay? Um, thoracotomy. Otomy, we say it is cutting into. And thoraco or thoraso, we say it is the chest, right? Cutting into the chest. Hematoma, hema, we said is blood. Oma, we said is tumor or mass, right? So a hematoma, that's a collection of blood in a body tissue or organ, right? So if we look at it just the medical term itself, that would mean a mass or tumor filled with blood, right? So hematoma is a collection of blood in a body tissue or organ. And if we look at it just for what it is, hematoma, which is if we if we just define it as a bloody tumor, right? or a tumor filled with blood. Um, nephro plus ectomy. Nephro is kidney, ectomy is surgical removal of, so surgical removal of the kidney is nephrectomy. And then let me let that line disappear down there. There we go. Okay, and then neuropathy. Neuro is nerve, pathy is disease. So neuropathy is nerve disease. So you have been, those of you that's brand new to medical terminology, be proud of yourself because you have been reading and joining some medical terms today. Um, I just um, have a um, few tips for you guys. Same thing I tell my students. You want to create flashcards? You can use actual index cards or you can use Quizlet. So, you know, the website Quizlet.com, you can create flashcards there. There are people who have flashcards already made there, so you can utilize those. But I recommend making your own. I also recommend... Um, having a family member or friend quiz you. So if you do have index cards, physical index cards, just go ahead and, um, you know, write them down. You want to have your um, 
on when you when you create your flashcards on one side you'll have the medical term and on the other side you'll have the body part so like for an example gastro you have on one side and then stomach you'll have on another side or if you want <coughs> excuse me you can have it on both sides you know whatever works for you but you definitely want to have a family member or friend quiz you okay another thing you want to do is consistently create terms out of your word parts okay so if you're new to medical terminology you're having trouble with it i i give my students assignments where they have to constantly create words out of their word parts so they get it they have to do it constantly because when you're consistent with practicing it gets better as i mentioned you know um um when you're first learning you know it's 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 going to you know it's going to be difficult right but you got to keep them in front of you you got to keep them in front of you in the beginning you want to focus on parts of the body okay this is how i always start focusing on parts of the body then i go into the suffixes common suffixes and then i start going into the prefixes so i'll do another lesson another time with the prefixes so today we cover roots and some suffixes next time i'll do some prefixes and we'll combine words with the prefix, root word, and suffix. We'll do some of those. Um, also, another thing you can do, read those medical news articles online to see what you retain. So, you know, once you start learning medical term, just pull them up. You know, you can literally Google medical news articles or, you know, medical journals and just kind of read. I mean, it's good to know what's going on in the, in, in the medical field anyway. And then you got to get your CEUs anyway. So you want to be reading up on this stuff anyway. And then just kind of see what you've retained. Like, you'll be surprised when you start reading this stuff. And you're like, wait a minute. Oh, this has to do with the heart or this has to do with the kidney. And it could be a long 20-letter word. But guess what? Because you recognize the root words in that word, you know, okay, this is dealing with the heart or the kidney. Or, you know, you may see ectomy and you know, okay, this is a surgical removal or something. You know, so this is what I mean when I say keep it in front of you. And also, I would say just give yourself grace and space to learn because you are learning a brand new language. You know, that's one of the things I tell my students because I do get people who are very frustrated with themselves. Like, like I can't get it. This is hard. It's OK. Learning anything in the beginning can be hard. The key is to, 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 to stick with it. Right. And to give yourself some grace. All right. All right. Let me see. I see I got some questions in here. See, I got a few comments on here. Um, Let's see. Hey guys. Hey Star, I'm good. Hey Latisha, I'm good. Thank you. Um, oh, congratulations, Sarita. Congratulations. So she okay, so your scores are going up. Okay. She said, I told my whole oh, perfect, Sarita. Perfect. Okay. Delicia says her test is April 1st for RMA. Good luck with that. Congratulations, Latisha. She took her CCMA and passed on the first try. Congratulations, pretty brown queen. Congratulations. Nella, you're welcome. Let me know if you guys have any questions before I end this. I just wanted to make sure I got through this first um, before I answer any questions. Let me know. I'll give it a few moments. If not, I'll go ahead and end this. But this was a highly requested video. I've gotten so many people asking me to do medical terminology. So I said, let me get a lesson together real quick. And the next time, like I said, I'll do some prefixes. So I'll give it a couple more moments. Let me know if you have any questions. All right, I don't see anything popping up. Give it a few more seconds. All right. I don't see anything coming up, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to go ahead and end this lesson. Hopefully this was helpful for those of you guys that are brand new to medical terminology. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, you can leave them down below in the comment section, or you can, of course, email me and that'll be listed in the description box. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you guys have a good day.